He was a very dangerous man, and uh, many believe he was responsible for many homicides and many murders. If convicted, Blake faces 390 years in prison and a $15.5 million fine for his role in the Shower Posse. In the third installment of our documentary series, we dive deeper into Jamaica's gangland, uncovering the lives and legacies of some of the island's most dangerous gangsters. From the shadows of Spanish Town to the streets of Kingston, these figures have wielded power, instilled fear, and left a permanent mark on both the criminal underworld and the communities they've impacted. We bring to light the untold stories of individuals whose names have become synonymous with violence, betrayal, and the relentless pursuit of power. Andrew Bunman Hope was linked to the One Order Gang in Spanish Town, Jamaica. He was known as one of the gang's leaders and tried to help stop fights between groups. The gang's actions led to violence in the area, especially when there were arguments over who should be the leader. Hope's role in the gang and the fights between groups in Spanish Town show how complicated and impactful gang issues can be in a community. Joel Andem, known for leading the Gideon Warriors gang, was one of Jamaica's most feared criminals, involved in a series of violent activities including over 20 murders. His criminal career began with a conviction for larceny in 1983, and despite a lengthy prison sentence, he was released on parole after eight years. Andam's gang was notorious in several communities in East St. Andrew and was responsible for numerous heinous acts, including the murder of Sylvia Edwards and other high-profile crimes. Andam's capture in May 2004 by a joint police-military team in Clarksonville marked a significant moment in Jamaica's fight against gang violence. At the time of his arrest, NM faced numerous charges, including murder and illegal possession of a firearm. His arrest brought relief to law enforcement and the communities affected by his gang's reign of terror. Kevin Ritchie Putendale, associated with a One Order gang, was captured in 2004. His involvement led to significant violence in Spanish Town, including a deadly gang feud that resulted in a curfew due to shootings and arsons. Tyndale faced numerous charges related to violent crimes, underlining the severity of his criminal activities and the impact on the community. Christopher Coke was born in the Tivoli Gardens area of Jamaica's capital, Kingston, in 1969. He was a little boy. He was loving He was loving on good. Of smoke rising from one of Kingston's poorest neighborhoods, Tivoli Gardens. On the third day of clashes with armed supporters of Christopher Dudas Coke. Reports were that the armed forces had launched an air attack. In May 2010, the streets of Kingston, Jamaica became a war zone. Security forces attacked the country's most dangerous gang, the Shower Posse and its notorious leader, Christopher Duddis Coke. His influence reached from the top of Jamaican politics all the way to the heart of Toronto's drug scene. And it was Canadian police who helped hunt down the Kingston kingpin. He's accused of being one of the most dangerous drug lords in the world. On Thursday, Christopher Coke, otherwise known as Dudus, was put on a plane bound for the United States, where he'll face charges of drug trafficking and arms dealing. This is the entrance to the neighborhood that was the stronghold of Christopher Dudus Coke. As we can see in the entrance, the military have set up a checkpoint and the curfew has been extended in this zone. Following bloodshed over his capture, Jamaican gang leader Christopher Dudas Coke has arrived in New York under tight security to face charges that he flooded the East Coast. The West Kingston Commission of Inquiry on Thursday saw footage for the first time of crime lord Christopher Dudas Coke behind bars after he was captured on June 22, 2010. Leader of a gang called the Shower Posse. Coke was arraigned Friday in a Manhattan federal court he pleaded not guilty to federal drug and weapons charges. He distributed guns and cash 
among his supporters to build their loyalty and increase his power base. This was the moment when residents of Tivoli Gardens found out that their beloved Don, Christopher Dudas Coke, was sentenced to 23 years imprisonment in the United States for racketeering and conspiracy charges. The light and anxious mood seen early in the community was transformed into one of somberness and reflection. Well, I'm feeling downhearted, you know, because I never expect the maximum still. Because he don't really deserve the, the maximum penalty. Why you say that? Because he's a, he's a good person and everybody who give evidence against him, they don't know him. They're just making up something. Christopher Dudas Coke was a significant figure in Jamaica's organized crime, leading the Shower Posse, a gang involved in various illegal activities including drug trafficking and arm smuggling. The gang, originally formed in the 1980s, was known for its violent methods particularly in the United States, where it contributed to the cocaine epidemic and was blamed for over 1,000 murders. Following his father Lester Lloyd Coke's death in 1992, Dudas took control of Tivoli Gardens in West Kingston, becoming a powerful figure in the community. He maintained a lower profile in the U.S. compared to his predecessors but continued the gang's operations, focusing on drug trafficking while trying to avoid provoking U.S. law enforcement. Despite the decrease in violence in the U.S. under his leadership, Jamaica experienced a spike in violence, with Tivoli Gardens gunmen implicated in numerous killings. Koch's influence extended beyond criminal activities. He was known for his charity work in Tivoli Gardens, providing resources and enforcing a form of community justice. His extradition request by the U.S. in 2009 led to significant unrest in Kingston, resulting in over 70 deaths. Coke was eventually captured in 2010, disguised as a woman, and sentenced by a U.S. court in 2012 to 23 years in prison for racketeering, conspiracy, and conspiracy to commit assault. Coke's sentencing concluded a tumultuous period in Jamaica-U.S. relations and highlighted a complex relationship between dons, political parties, and communities in Jamaica. His case also reflected a shift in organized crime in Jamaica with criminal groups becoming more fragmented and maintaining a lower profile to avoid detection. His father, Lester, known as Jim Brown, was the chief enforcer for a feared drug syndicate. And despite his humble beginnings, Lester Coke's increasing wealth allowed him to provide the very best for his children. His father was a far more notorious figure than he was, but the father really wasn't active in Jamaica throughout the 80s. His father's gang was expanding its drugs empire into North America and Europe, using methods considered extreme, even within a trade defined by excessive violence. They became known as the Shower Posse, because their favoured form of execution was to shower their targets with dozens of bullets. He's a very dangerous man, and uh, many believe he was responsible for many homicides and many murders. Lester Lloyd Coke, also known as Jim Brown, was a central figure in the history of organized crime in Jamaica, leading the notorious shower posse during the 1980s. His life took a drastic turn from being an apprentice locksmith to becoming a key player in the violent political struggles that engulfed Jamaica during the 1960s and 1970s. The shower posse, under Koch's leadership, was involved in trafficking cocaine from Jamaica to major cities in the U.S., contributing significantly to the drug trade and associated violence both in Jamaica and the United States. Koch's involvement in the political landscape, particularly his support for the Jamaica Labor Party (JLP) and the violent tactics employed by the Shower Posse, contributed to the intense political and criminal violence during this period. His death in 1992 under mysterious circumstances in a Jamaican prison cell, coinciding with the murder of his son, Mark, fueled further violence and speculation about the government's involvement in his death. Following his death, Koch's legacy continued through his son, Christopher Dudas Koch, who also became a prominent figure in the criminal underworld, leading the shower posse until his arrest and extradition to the United States in 2010. The violence and unrest associated with Dudas Koch's arrest highlighted the enduring influence of the Koch family on Jamaica's political and criminal landscape. But more than half of those scheduled to be arrested are still at large. Among those, the head of the shower posse, Vivian Blake, 
If convicted, Blake faces 390 years in prison and a $15.5 million fine for his role in the Shower Posse. Shower Posse is the, is the largest uh, posse of, of some 40 that are presently active in the United States. How was your five, six years in prison there? Well, basically, I can handle it. Vivian Blake, born on May 11, 1956, was a key figure in the establishment of the Shower Posse, a gang notorious for its involvement in drug trafficking and violent acts. Despite coming from a humble background in West Kingston, Jamaica, Blake was able to attend a private high school, St. George's College, thanks to a scholarship. He later moved to New York City in 1973, expanding his operations across the United States. Blake's actions in the Bronx during the 1980s, particularly in areas such as Soundview and Crotona Park, led to a significant increase in availability. His gang, the Shower Posse, gained its name from their ruthless practice of showering their enemies with bullets, contributing to their fearsome reputation. Despite facing charges for multiple killings in Miami, Blake managed to avoid capture for a time by fleeing to Jamaica. In 1999, after additional charges were filed against him, Blake was extradited to the United States, where he pleaded guilty to racketeering and conspiracy among other charges in 2000. He was sentenced to 28 years in prison but was released on parole after serving eight years. Blake returned to Jamaica in January 2009 and lived there until his death on March 21, 2010 from a heart attack, exacerbated by kidney disease and ongoing dialysis treatment. Marlon Duppy Film Perry was a notorious figure in Jamaica, wanted for numerous crimes including the murders of two policemen. Despite a challenging childhood and a speech impediment, he vowed revenge against those who bullied him. Perry's father's imprisonment and his own subsequent involvement in violent crimes cast a shadow over his life. He was known for his evasiveness, changing his appearance frequently to escape capture. His death in 2017 ended a reign of terror in St. Thomas, where he was linked to at least 16 murders. Dorset Bulby Bennett, also known as Donovan Bennett, was a notorious leader of the Klansman gang, based in Spanish Town, Jamaica. He was involved in a range of criminal activities, including murder and extortion, and was known for his extensive criminal empire. Bennett's influence extended to the ownership of numerous vehicles and heavy equipment used in construction and hauling industries throughout Jamaica. He became the leader of the Klansman Gan by allegedly murdering the previous leader, Derek Puppy String Eccleston, in 1993, leading to numerous violent confrontations with rival gangs particularly the One Order Gang. Bennett's operations weren't limited to gang violence. He also ran extensive extortion rackets targeting local businesses, especially taxi drivers. Despite his criminal activities, he was able to maintain a lavish lifestyle, living in a large, well-furnished house with a sophisticated water pump system and a standby electricity generator. His death in 2005 during a gun battle with law enforcement marked the end of his reign, but also sparked violent reactions from his gang and supporters, leading to further violence in the area. As we conclude this chapter of Jamaica's Most Notorious, the tales of these gang leaders not only shed light on the individuals themselves but also on the broader societal and systemic issues that fuel the cycle of violence and crime in Jamaica. Their stories are a testament to the complex interplay between socioeconomic factors, political affiliations, and the human quest for power and survival. As Jamaica continues to grapple with the challenges posed by organized crime, the stories of these gangsters serve as a sobering reminder of the work that remains to be done in order to secure a future free from the shadows of gang dominance and violence.